Okay, we have a differentiation question here, and this one's going to be something to do with some implicit differentiation. Okay, we've got this sketch. It says figure, show, figure four shows a sketch of the curve with the equation x squared minus 2xy plus 3y squared equals 50. And we're going to show that dy by dx is equal to this thing that we've got here. I have to use implicit differentiation here because I don't have y equals. So I'm going to just do this and see if I can put it in this part of the page. That's 2x squared minus 2xy plus 3y squared equals 50. Right, this bit's going to be easy to differentiate. This bit's going to be easy to differentiate. This bit might be a little bit tricky, so I may do some extra work over the side. Okay, differentiating this just gets 2x. Let's have a think about how we differentiate this. Looks like this thing is going to require the product rule because it's a product of two functions. So I have u is equal to minus 2x and v is equal to y u dash is minus 2 and v dash is dy dx. So let's just do the product rule. We're going to have those two, which is minus 2y, and those two, which is minus 2x dy dx. And then when you differentiate 3y squared, the chain rule says differentiate it as you would expect. So we would expect this to go to a 6y, but because we're differentiating y instead of x, we're going to add in that dy by dx. And when you differentiate 50, you get zero. Let's just block this bit off here so we can see it's something a bit different. Oh, and I obviously did those bits multiplied as well. Okay, so let's continue now, just collecting some of these terms together. In fact, actually, I guess we could multiply, uh, we could divide everything by two. That might make things look a little bit neater. You don't have to do this now, but I'm going to do this now. And then I'm going to put these terms onto the other side. So I get y minus x. And then on this side, I've got dy by dx. I'm just going to factorize it, and I get 3y minus x. So I have that dy by dx is equal to y minus x over 3y minus x. If you ended up with something like x minus y over x minus 3y, that's the same as this. You can just multiply the top and bottom by negative 1, and it will give you this thing that you've got here. Okay. Right, so that's the first part of the question where we've got four of the marks. It then says the curve is used to model the shape of the cycle track with both x and y measured in kilometres. The points P and Q represent points that are furthest west and furthest east of the origin as shown in the diagram. Using part A, find the exact coordinates of the point P. We're trying to find this particular point here. Now, if we were to draw a tangent, we would say that the gradient of this tangent the gradient at this point here is undefined. Okay, it is not zero. The gradient is instead undefined. So we have to look at this gradient function here and think about when is this gradient function undefined. Well, you're not allowed to divide by zero. So this bottom part that we have here must be equal to zero when we're either at P or Q because that would make the gradient undefined. So for that bit we've got, we are now going to say, for b, that the denominator 3y minus x is equal to 0. In other words, x is equal to 3y. And I can take x equals 3y, and I can put that back into um, the equation that we've got here. My equation is x squared minus 2xy plus 3y squared equals 50. When I put x equals 3y in here, it's going to produce an equation that will tell me some y coordinates. So I have 3y all squared minus 2 times 3y times y plus 3y squared equals 50. So that's 9y squared minus 6y squared plus 3y squared equals 50. So that is 6y squared equals 50. y squared equals 50 divided by 6 which is 25 over 3. So you get that y is equal to 25 over 3. I'm going to get it in its rationalized form, plus or minus 5 root 3 over 3. Now, we also need to find the x-coordinate. x is the y-coordinate multiplied by 3. So x would be plus or minus. This multiplied by 3 is just 5 root 3. Last thing we need to think about is they've asked for p, not q. So that's why we've got two coordinates here. 
the plus and minus ones are going to refer to P and Q. Well, the one that they want for P, you can look on the graph and see that they're both negative. So for the one for P, we should say that the coordinate of P is the X coordinate, minus 5 root 3, and the Y coordinate, which is minus 5 root 3 over 3. Nearly there. Part C of the question says, explain briefly how to find the coordinates of the point that is furthest north of the origin. So when it's furthest north, the gradient function is actually equal to zero. It's flat at that top bit. So if the gradient function is equal to zero, instead we would say that the numerator of our, of our dy by dx is equal to zero. So we would say that y minus x is equal to zero. Um, we would say y is equal to x. We would sub back into the equation. Um, y equals x, we would sub it back into the equation, solve and take the positive values for x and y. You have to say that you would take the positive values, because when you actually would sub it back in, you would either find out this coordinate or this coordinate. And we need to make sure that they've, we're telling them that we know how to find the northern one, which is to do that substitution there. Right, so that's question nine. Question 10, we've got a differential equation here. The height above ground, h meters, of a passenger on a roller coaster can be modeled by this differential equation, where t is the time in seconds from the start of the ride. Given that the passenger is five meters above the ground at the start of the ride, so h is equal to five when t is equal to zero show that this thing is true. Well, don't worry about this too much. It's just basically saying we need to solve this differential equation. We want to get rid of this thing that we have. So the way we're going to solve this differential equation of dh dt equals h cos of 0.25t over 40 is we're going to separate the variables. So the h variable is going to go over here, and the time variable is going to go over here. So I'm going to actually multiply up by 40. Do I want to multiply it by 40? Um, no, I might actually just divide by h. So I'm just going to have 1 over h, and that's going to be dh. And then that bit's gone, so I've just got here the cos of 0.25t divided by 40 dt. OK, so I've separated the, I put the dt over here, I took the h down here, and then I'm going to integrate both sides. When I integrate 1 over h, I get ln h. When I integrate this side, which is cos, well, I know it's going to be a sine of 0.25t. And we're just going to think really carefully about what that would give us. This, if we were to differentiate this, would give us a quarter of this. But I don't want a quarter. I want a 40th. So I need an extra tenth that I would have in there. OK, this is our consider. We would consider it to be sine of 0.25t. But then we're going to have to scale it by a tenth. So then instead of it being a quarter, it's a 40th. And we're then going to add in a constant here. Now, it might be sensible to have the constant as just C at this stage, I think. I think C should just be all right. Um, if I want to find out what C is, I could actually go straight into this bit here and say that H is equal to 5 when T is equal to 0. So when H is equal to 5, T is equal to 0. So ln 5 is equal to, well, the sine of 0 is 0. So C is equal to ln 5. We're nearly there. Let's go back with what we've got. We have ln h equals 1 over 10 sine 0.25t plus ln 5. Well, let's collect these lns together. So I have the ln of h minus ln 5 equals 1 over 10 sine 0.25t. This can be put together as the ln of h over 5 equals 1 over 10 sine 0.25t. Now I can get rid of the ln by saying h over 5 is equal to e to the 1 over 10 sine 0.25t. And then I can multiply by 5. And I get 5e to the, they've I think got it instead of a tenth as 0.1 sine of 0.25t. That's what they were looking for at that beginning bit. Let's just double check we've got it as they wanted it. 5e to the 0.1 sine 0.25t. Yep, we've done part A correctly there. 
Part B says, state the maximum height of the passenger above the ground. So the maximum height that the passenger can be above the ground, well, if you think about this thing that we've got inside here, looks like the maximum thing that this can be is when this thing at the top is as big as possible. Um, hmm, is that gonna be the best way of doing it? Let's have a look, the maximum height of the passenger. Yeah, this thing can be between zero and one. We want this whole thing to be as big as possible and it actually occurs when this is e to the power of zero. So the maximum height for part b is just going to be five meters. And that is because of the way that this is going to be varying. If we just think about if this was one, you would have five times e to the 0.1 yeah, that's definitely going to be bigger. We actually want this to be as big as possible. My apologies, guys. So if we want this to be as big as possible, we want sine of 0.25t to be its maximum. And we know the maximum thing that that can be is 1. So the maximum height is going to be 5 times e to the 0.1, which is 5.53 meters to three significant figures. We want this bit up here to be as big as possible. If it was as small as possible, the smallest height, it would be when sine of this is equal to minus one, and it goes, I think, down to 4.53 meters. Sorry about that. It then says the passenger reaches the maximum height for the second time, t seconds after the start of the ride. Find the value of t. So the maximum height is to do with this, okay? We want to know for part c when the sine of 0.25t is equal to one because that's when it reaches its maximum. We know that the sine graph reaches its maximum. Are we in, yeah, we'll be in radians obviously. So, because it's in calculus, we know that this is pi over two when it reaches its maximum, but that's the first time it reaches its maximum. We want to know the second time that it reaches its maximum. So we can add on 2 pi to this. So we know that 0.25t, the second time that it reaches its maximum, will be 2 plus um, pi over 2 plus 2, which is 5 pi over 2. So it's going to be equal to 5 pi over 2. Solving this equation by dividing both sides by 0.25, and then making sure I've got that multiplied by pi, we come up with 10 pi, which is 31.4 seconds and that is to three significant figures. I'm just gonna double check they wanted it to three significant figures. Yep, it just says to find the value of t. So it's the second time that it got to its maximum point. Question 11, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna actually stop at this point, I think, and then we'll do one more. 